Anyway, thank you everyone for being here. I'm Dab Lion. I work at Lodestar. It's an Ethereum consensus client from Chainsafe. And I'm gonna talk today about light clients. So I want to start by providing an example. So today we have a lot of L1s and usually what they promise is this blazing, fast, scalable, decentralized future. But what we usually find in reality is this set of sporadic, non-committed users which they connect to one single sponsored JSON RPC maintained by the foundation, then then connects to this small network of validator cartels. Then you have to wonder, is this really the future of finance or just a replica of traditional power structures? Like, at least it's okay for now, in my opinion, but we definitely can do better. So what we are fighting for decentralization, it's critically important because it gives this amazing property of collusion resistance. And to achieve that, we need to have a broad base of power distributed in different stakeholders, be users, exchanges, infrastructure providers. So if we don't achieve that, essentially the industry will start to condensate in these very strong, small um, cartels, and then bad things can happen. Um, we are seeing this now, unfortunately, I'm not going to name what this represents, but you can imagine. So, yeah, decentralization is really important, and to achieve that, we need to enable anyone to participate, anyone to fully verify the system, and anyone to fork the system. This one is critically important because in case that something like this happens, you want to be able to fork the system and reject this hostile takeover of power. So. This sounds very dystopian, but Vitalik has been talking about this for a while. There is this amazing post he did, and he brings this example of the fork works. So the majority of miners, exchangers, and explorers, they collude, and they then just mint this insane amount of tokens to a dev address, and they will maybe brand it in Twitter as developer fund to ensure the sustainability of the protocol or something like this, but it definitely goes against the will of the community, and it has to be rejected. However, if they control the majority of the stake or the power of the providers, they can disperse this value into the DeFi ecosystem, and it will be really, really, really hard to undo. Like for those OGs that you remember the DAO hack, we were really lucky that the funds were locked in a specific set of accounts for some days, so we could do a hard fork, but in this case, this would not be possible. So how do you prevent this? With more validation, people running nodes, and distributing the power such that this thing is actually impossible, and if it's possible, you want to create so much chaos that they will have to revert and return the power to the community. So it has actually happened, this. Who is familiar with Justin Sun and the Steam blockchain? Like, in my opinion, this is the most epic thing that has happened in crypto ever, so please look it up. Um, in 2020, Justin Sun bought Steam, the blockchain, which is a network for content, and he took over some significant share of the network stake, about 20%, and then collaborated with exchanges, specifically Binance and Huobi, to take over users' funds and then get a majority of the stake on the blockchain. What they did is then boot all the witnesses that were not loyal and effectively control completely the blockchain. The community had no other in-protocol choice, so they just completely forked the blockchain into Hive and replicated all the dApps, all the providers, and everything, but they just left over the balances from Justin Sun and, even, and everyone that participated in the attack. Like, this is a really, really serious attack that, thankfully, it was survived, but it's a stark reminder that these things can happen. And we can think, oh no, Ethereum, we are, we are better, we are really decentralized, and which is it's true, but Binance has a non-trivial share of balance in the Ethereum Bitcoin chain. So yeah, we just have to be we just have to be vigilant. So yeah, you can participate. We must protect Ethereum. We must do our part, run nodes, evangelize for decentralization, stake at home. So all these things are really, really important. And what what I'm gonna chill today is exactly that with, with like clients. So yeah, just food for thought. If Ethereum was under attack, like the one I saw with Justin Son where would you go to check the correct state of the network? I would go to Etherscan, but would that be part of the attack? 
I don't know, so yeah, run your nodes, do your part. However, running nodes today is quite expensive. Running geth takes a significant amount of resources, be disk, bandwidth, etc. And what most people end up using is connecting to a remote RPC. So in this chart, you can see cost on the vertical axis and security on the horizontal. Full nodes gives you the maximum amount of security. You validate all the blocks, the state transitions, you, so you cannot be fooled. With remote RPCs, you are just eating whatever Infura is throwing at you. So it's a huge trade-off. What we want to foster is this middle area where you have to pay a small extra cost or some extra cost in exchange to having a greater level of security. So this is how I think it looks like today with the stakers I'm talking about. You have stakers, exchanges, explorers, stakeholders that are really concerned about the network. They will run full nodes. And then the sporadic users, the ape boards users, they will just connect to the remote RPC. And then you have these super users, dApps, that they should be invested in being in this area, but currently they are not because it's just not possible. So what can we do? Oh, and by the way, we are still doing better than traditional finance. So no security and still costly. So I'm going to focus now on browser-like clients, which we are trying to fill this bottom space. So give some extra security to a remote RPC at not a high cost. So what is a browser-like client? When you connect to Infura, you are using the JSON RPC and just assuming everything you want. But if you want to validate all the data, the first thing you have to do is come to consensus on what's the head. This is what I call here with consensus, and it's the activity of acquiring a safe head. Once you have that, then you would navigate to through consensus layer and then through the execution layer to get data, all the fun stuff, which balances, contracts, calls, and even go into L2 for sharding, but that's for the future. So you would use all these awesome in protocol teams that have existed since Genesis to make like clients possible. If you are not aware, all the Ethereum team and even Bitcoin have worked really hard to make like clients possible. They have not materialized for reasons I will address later, but they are possible, and it's thanks to these things. So first things you want to do as a browser like client is to get a safe head. Post-merge, the mechanism that we have to do that is with the sync committee. So if you want to track the head in a normal full node, you would have to follow the entire validator set, which is very expensive. But instead here, you follow this 512 committee that rotates every day, and you can do that extremely cheaply with only 25 kilobytes per day. Um, the committee shuffles in a way that uh, it makes it really hard to be corruptible. And then when you sing, you can just jump from one to the other and get to the head. Then once you have a safe head, you can actually follow it with also a very low cost, about 81 kilobytes per hour. And tracking participation, you can also be somewhat safe from forks. So yeah, very low cost, high security. This is what we want. This is what my clients are about. So once you have a safe head, now you go into the consensus layer data. And you can get fun stuff like the latest execution head. You do that with Merkle proofs. And then you can repeat the same with execution layer, with state proofs. You can do fun stuff like get the account balance, the account nonce, any contract storage. You can also get proofs for blocks, and you can get logs and transaction receipts. So essentially, it is possible to cover almost all of the JSON RPC with these sorts of tricks. So to recap, a browser like client, the first thing it has to do is consensus, get ahead. Here is the first step. This is the weakest one. It has a honest majority. You are not validating state transition. So if there is an attack that the one I said before, you can be a victim. But the data size is bounded. And this is where, so far, we have only a transport for a REST API. But we want to build a P2P layer on top of this. Um, also, when statelessness lands, this assumption will drop to only one of them. So that's really cool. For CL data, Merkle proofs, you can be censored, but not light, so it's a one of an assumption. However, the data here is really high, and it's unbounded. So we are providing a REST API, but we hope that in the future, Portal Network will help decentralize this layer. And the same applies with EL, where here the data is even bigger. So 
So far in Lodestar we have built a REST API. This is done. We have a demo, the one I'm not be able to show. <laughs> but we are lobbying for adoption in most clients. There is also a PR started by Status to, to have a draft on this P2P network. It's implemented. We're going to have some tests soon. And how it's going to look, maybe I'm going to glance over the details, but these are the routes. You can get snapshot to get started, some committee updates, and then you track with server sent events. Um, PR. We don't have EIPs in consensus. We have PRs. <laughs> and this is how it looks for the peer-to-peer -peer version. We have one gossip topic and a bunch of regresp that cover what we sent so far. For CL data, here we have only delivered uh, a, uh, an API. This is the route. You can get a proof or a multi-proof at any point of the state, at any state ID. Uh, the same for EL. There is the eat get proof with the IP. It's only partially adopted. So far, it's only get and Ethereum JS. But with this uh, and portal network, yeah, the JSON RPC could be fully covered. But it still needs a specialty tool EVM where the async S load. Um, but I'm not going to go into the details. So demo time. You can imagine here we show a browser where we do this flow. You start with a trusted root, then you go into consensus. You get some proofs, and eventually we show the status of of an account. We can get you to do the demo real quick. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. You sure? Yeah, yeah. All right. So this is browser that clients, um, but there is even more fun stuff going on in this direction. On the top side, I put here statelessness, and this is the Ethereum One X research that it's already included in Vitalik's roadmap. Um, all these fun names, the, the merge, the birch, the splurge. So this is the birch section. And what it's going to do is currently, if you want to validate the state transition, you need a block in green that's provided to you by the network. In red, it's provided by you. So this is why nodes are so expensive. They need so much cost. With witnesses, we will just shove some data into the block. So it will be a batteries included scenario. And you can validate a block only with the block. So the, the state requirement will be dropped. And clients could choose to either hold no state, some state, or all the state. So how it works is with some crypto voodoo magic. So before, we had to get all the data, all the blue one you see here. Not anymore. Now we have a Burkle tree proof with commitments and all this crypto stuff. So only one proof. And then, yeah, about the portal network. So this is a project by Piper Merian. Uh, it's a collection of DHT networks that will enable lightweight protocol access. Um, this is critical for both statelessness and browser-like clients. And it's the solution we all hope that will decentralize the, the data layer. So. How do, how do we drive adoption? We have, again, this chart with these different users. What I want to see is to take these sporadic users from this shitty corner at the, at, at the bottom to the right, give them more security. And then for stakers and other dApps, bring them down the cost such we have more, more participants. So yeah, what I'm fighting for is the progressive decentralization of the infrastructure layer. How it works now is we have all these wallets, which is cool. We have diversification, but there is still this huge trust implication here, and we want to drop it. So this is what I'm looking for. Um, Dub developers, they are going to Infura, Alchemy. It's cool. It's cool for now. This is not what we want. Uh, stakers, please don't stake with Coinbase. Don't stake with Binance. Stake at home. But I know it's expensive. We are working on it. Um, same for users. So. The blue lady is not happy. Okay, she, she's not happy. Um, and w w when to do this? So, it's, I think it's very important to remind people that decentralization is this thing that you don't see, but it's slowly going away until you have like this catastrophic failure, and then it's too late. So, yeah, the time is now to do these things. So. Again, Vitalik did this great post. If you're aware, the Ethereum ecosystem is moving to a future where there will exist proposer-builder builder separation. What this means is that block production, it's OK to be centralized. We, do, we accept this. But this means that verification has to be more widespread than ever. So running nodes, having like clients, having as much nodes as possible, it's critically important. And yeah. 
statelessness, browser-like clients are essential to try to drive adoption and move as many people out of these untrusted removed RPCs as possible. So, yeah, the end game is let's one up our decentralization. And who you gonna who, who are you gonna be? The virgin or the chat? To speak yours. So, yeah, this was my presentation. Lordstar is hiring. Um, also, Lordstar is mainnet ready. It has been for a while. We proposed our first block in November. Now we have 151 blocks proposed by our own validators, also being run by the community. Really happy, good performance. You see that number, 99%. It's good, it's a happy face. So you can try Lodestar now. And yeah, if you want to subscribe to updates from Lodestar, uh, screenshot this or I will leave here for the YouTube stream. And Thank you so much. I'm Dad Lion. Follow me on Twitter or GitHub. Thank you so much. If you want to go back to the back, the last screen real quick, uh, just to give people the chance to uh, snap a shot of that. And do we have any questions from the crowd? Hey, so about that uh, thing of block production can be centralized, right? Um, how centralized does it have to be? Because I'm thinking if you know, they get um, censored if they are stopped, essentially. So it seems like a centralized block production isn't really that great either, even if you can validate it entirely. Sorry, the problem is for here, there is a lot of echo, and the sound is coming from there, so I'm not hearing anything. Can you, like, crank it up to the maximum? Put your mic on your mouth, literally. Okay. Uh, basically, I was just asking if uh, centralizing block production can lead to other issues, for example, being censored by governments, by whatever, uh, and whether that can, like, can be protected somehow by the fact that you validate um, in a decentralized way. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's impossible to hear. Um, maybe you can ask the question and I can stand in front of the speaker. <laughs> yeah? Um, again, so is centralizing block production really that great? Like, can uh, can it suffer attacks from censorship, from stuff like that? So just there are no more block producers, and uh, there's nothing to validate. Okay. Cool. What Sorry so much. So the question was if block production risk the the point of having centralization and censorship and no more blocks. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, the thing is, the way block production would work is similar to how MEB is now. So block production will be delegated to some bundler. And as long as you only have one that is not corrupt and honest, the, the, the blockchain can progress. Like there is active work on this. And I think what, what can happen is in the short term, that could be some censorship. But immediately, the, the blockchain could, could respond to that. It could see who was the bundler that caused that block to be missed, and it could reject from the set and switch to another. If all blunderers go rogue, then yeah, the blockchain stops. But you only need one to be, to be correct. And actually, the bundlers, they would optimize the network for a bunch of things, MEB, L2 stuff. But if they cannot participate, the, the validator could still propose blocks. They would be suboptimal, but the blockchain could still chug along. Yeah, quick question around the uh, light clients and the impact that would have on the full nodes. So if everyone kind of moves over to light clients, who's running the full nodes, and then are there any security concerns, et cetera, with not enough full nodes being online, et cetera? So the question was if enough people move to like clients, is there any problem with not having enough full nodes? Uh, yes, yes. yes that, could, that, that, could be, that could be a huge issue. Um, the thing I, I think what, what we are good is that now um, with proof of stake, there is a huge incentive by a lot of parties to run full nodes. And we are still really, really, really far away from having uh, a distribution where we have too many like clients. So I would like to first get to a point that we say, oh shit, we have too many like clients, then what can we do? Because we are way, way, way away from this reality. Um, <clears throat> so do you think there will be in the future um, a trend with, for example, wallets integrating directly light clients? I think uh, maybe two years ago there were a project called Mustekala, something like that. I think it was from some guys from Metamask, but it was uh, dropped. So it is something that could happen in the future. Do you know any like projects already going on in this direction? 
Yeah, so there, there are some initiatives. Um, at, at the wallet level, I don't think so. Uh, this is what we are working on. I don't think there are the tools yet to make it a reality. Pocket Network, they do have some clients. I think one is the ultra ultralight client, which can run in browsers, but they are still very dependent on constant connections with PR. So what I would like to see first is taking the centralized model of connecting to one single server and adding trust to it. Uh, that way you can, projects like Pocket Network, where it's still trust, but you have a multiplexing. So you connect to a random set of nodes. So um, being fooled here is, is, is harder. There is also a watchdog scenario. So if you can add these Merkle-proof strategies that could have greater resilience, then the next step is taking this to P2P. And that's where things get complicated. But status team are working on it. Um, there is a web RTC working group that could make a reality. So yeah, I would say first give a bit of trust to the centralized model and then bring to move to P2P. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much.